Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. And today we're gonna look at another camera. Um, a couple episodes ago we looked at the Sony NEX7, which is a mirrorless camera. And this is, I, I'm, I'm late on the bandwagon here, I know, because a lot of people have already jumped into the mirrorless thing. Um, I just didn't think that I had much use for this in my life. And I, I had a specific reason that I wanted to check out the NX7, and it was particularly to do B-roll on video, and I've been really impressed. And you know, this is what gear does, is one thing leads to another. I wanna talk about the NEX5, which is the NEX7's slightly smaller and little brother. And I wanna talk about, um, these cameras are really impressive to me. And I wanna talk about why. And we'll compare this to the NEX7 a little bit and you know, which one might work for you. But you know, for a camera this size that shoots images of the quality this does is simply amazing. So what we're gonna do is go over to the workbench so I can you know, open this up and show you a few things. And uh, so come on over and let's have a look. Okay, so we've got the NEX5 here on the right and this is the NEX7 over on the left, which we reviewed in another episode that we did a while back. And I wanna show you some of the basic differences between these. and. Gosh, how impressed I am with these cameras, actually. NEX5, as you can see, if you look at them side by side, is just a little bit shorter and a little bit more squished in there, a little less wide. And uh, you'll also notice the other big shift is that on the back, on the back side, you have uh, you have a secondary electronic viewfinder um, up on the um, upper left hand side which more or less electronically simulates a traditional viewfinder and you don't have that at all in the NEX5. Now you can tell that, uh, well one other thing too is you, you have two control knobs on the 7 and you're down to one on the 5 and I really have not noticed this to be a problem and mainly it's the way that I use it and I'll explain that a little bit. Um, like I said, I needed uh, a camera, or in this case cameras, that would be capable, actually became very interested in these for the video capabilities and they have not disappointed at all. Um, there is one small disappointing factor when it comes to video on these. The specs say that they will record about 29 minutes of video or so. And the truth of the matter is that they use CMOS sensors, just like most SLR cameras. These are AP, APS-C sized. And what'll happen is as you're filming, because of the size and the design of these cameras is they get a little hot. And what'll happen is the, uh, the, the uh, CMOS sensor warms up and basically starts to shut down. So I've had enormous heating issues with these, which makes it challenging to film certain things. Now, if you're just making short films, you're shooting just you know run and gun B-roll style, you're not gonna notice much because you're probably not gonna need more than four or five minutes at a time. Uh, it's kind of like going back to the old Canon 5D Mark II when it first came out when you had some pretty big limitations on it. But if you're trying to film a long interview or a performance or something like that, you'll have issues. Now, when it does heat up, you just turn the camera off for, for just a little bit, a couple minutes, turn it back on and you're good to go again. So I haven't had, you know, it's a predictable problem, I guess is what I'm saying. Now, the other interesting thing about the NEX5, it is half the price of the NEX7, pretty much. And you could tell that, what's interesting is it's not just the little brother, it's a completely different design that has been employed into this. And I'll explain what I mean. One of the uses is they really intend this camera to be much like a smartphone with a really nice lens. And so, it has a touch screen on it. Uh, you can take pictures in a very similar fashion that you do on the iPhone. You can check your focus. You can do pretty much a lot from the touch interface. It's not bad, it's a small screen, and if you're used to working on a smaller type phone, really not a big deal. Um, just to show you the screen, and you probably see that it does fingerprint up pretty easily, but it has a double hinge, so you can pull it out if you are filming from a, looking down at a lower angle on the camera. It also has double hinge, so if you need to be looking up at it while you're filming. That is a very nice feature. And the best thing about the NEX5 is it will tilt completely the other way. So if you were shooting a podcast like this one or something like that, you can you know at least get a framing reference for yourself. Um, anyway, very nice, very well thought out design. It doesn't feel cheap or flimsy. Um, now, as it, it's been said in I think one of the comments I got when I was reviewing the NEX7. So one thing I do wanna point out on here too, is and this has been said in some of the comments that uh, you know, these are capable of taking very high quality, awesome images. Um, the interesting thing is, is just the physical nature of the camera being mirrorless and everything's electronic is you gotta get used to, it's more like acting like a computer than it is a camera. But once you get past that and you're concentrating on the images that you're making, um, they are capable of some wonderful things. Just to show you too, the way the sensor sits in these, if I take the lens cap off, it's almost right up against the lens flange here, which makes it very easy to find lenses with adapters. This is a kit lens that actually came with the NEX7. Um, but also I have, and just so we don't get a lot of dust in there. Um, if you buy the adapters, this is an older Voigtlander lens that I got. 
it's not super old, but uh, a couple of years old. And it is a screw mount Leica style um, lens. And so if you get a 39 mount screw mount lens adapter, basically you just screw the lens on like so. And uh, this is a 15 millimeter, I believe. And so it's capable of pretty wide angle. I mean, remember you're on a crop sensor, so um, it's not gonna be as wide as it would be on a full frame or a 35 millimeter, but it is very easy to use and very easy to deal with. You just line that up and I now have a non-standard lens and the other cool thing about this lens is it's really small so if I want relatively wide angle shots and you know fits in the palm of your hand almost in your pocket without the lens it certainly does and these are really compact and easy to take places um, I'll go ahead and turn this one on too pretty much much like the any x7 everything is pretty much at your fingertips either on the touch screen or by the wheel um, I just kind of prefer the wheel myself but your mileage may vary I can change my ISO I leave these in manual mode a lot simply because um, I'm using them for video capabilities but they work pretty well in manual mode for stills and I kind of prefer to shoot manually anyway, and I don't really even need to go aperture priority or shutter priority for the most part. Uh, they do a pretty good job. The, another difference between the two, it's pretty much the same software, but the ISO settings on, on the NEX5 here, you kind of, for video at least, you cap out at 32. You can't really shoot video any higher than ISO 3200. This one will go up to 64, I can take it up to 12.8, and I can actually take it up to 25.6. So, it does, the image will fall apart a little bit at those high, and those are seriously high ISO settings. Um, I have noticed that these cameras, both of them, the sensors act a lot like, I mentioned my 5D Mark II, my older camera a minute ago. Um, it's similar performance. You can get up to 1600 easily um, without much noise. Um, when you go to 32, it really, it, it, you start to introduce some, some noise and grain into the picture. Um, depending on what you're shooting, it may or may not be a big deal. Um, and beyond that is when you start to see a lot of heavy grain and the, the thing starts to fall apart on you a little bit. One other thing to mention on these is I mentioned the uh, metaphor or the, the comparison to a smartphone a minute ago. And one of the things I'll show you on here is that you do in, have this enabled on the 5 and not the 7. You can connect via Wi-Fi. Um, I haven't done much image transfer that way just because I, it's just as easy to pull out the SD card for me. Um, I haven't had the need for that and so I haven't tested that. But you can actually connect to the internet and go download applications uh, to put on the phone. And so the whole idea is that this was going to run kind of like a smartphone. I got to be honest, this is a real, uh, it works fairly well but it's a little bit gimmick, gimmicky feature. First of all, there aren't that many apps available for this and they don't do a whole lot of stuff. The, really the only useful one I found in there was a time lapse application. So, okay, that's fairly useful, but why would I need to pay more than 99 cents? You know, we're all used to kind of the Apple Store model. Um, the apps are a little more expensive, and I just didn't think it was really worth it. Um, the other thing I question is Apple has a huge developer community around what goes into the iOS stuff, and Sony NEX really doesn't at this point. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how further they go with that in the future. But you know, everything is accessible right here from the camera. I can change all my settings. I can initial, initialize my card. I can change the brightness and color. Anyway, the settings are very standard, just like they are on the NAX7. I can pretty much control everything in here. Um, it's, it's very nice and very easy to use. Um, you know, and you get a lot of the features that you get in DSLRs. For instance, if I change the display mode around a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see this. I actually have my, my bubble level in here too. So if you're shooting landscape and you need everything to be perfectly straight, you can you can use that. And that's that's typically a feature that you find on higher end DSLRs. And really, Sony designed these well. There's nothing missing on these. Um, the movie button is right there. It's really not easy to hit accidentally. Your shutter release is up here. Um, some of the designs on some of the mirrorless cameras, the movie button, generally you end up hitting by accident a lot. And it's really not designed that way here. It's, it's really beautifully done. Um, the other main difference between the two, just um, I don't think it matters too much is that uh, the NEX5 is a 16.1 megapixel and I believe the NEX7 was 23 or 20, 24. And so that's not a huge resolution difference, but if for whatever reason your application demands the max resolution possible, that might be a consideration between the two. Um, you get slightly better low light performance out of the NEX5. And you know, really, I can't recommend these enough. They're amazing. They will do a lot of the features for video that the higher end stuff like the, um, Oh, the Sony NEX series like the FS100, the FS700 will allow you to do peaking to help with autofocus and the same thing is controllable here. So anyway, that is basically the NEX5. Okay, so this has been some talk about the Sony NEX5 and this is really quickly becoming my favorite camera. Um, the, the NEX series are small, um, they have amazing image quality and when you start to get used to some of the just weirdness of shooting with, you know, basically an electronic viewfinder on the back which is a basically a computer screen 
screen. Um, you know, they, somebody left a comment on the NX7 episode. They are like working on a computer and less like a camera. But once you get beyond that, and you learn what you're doing with making images with them. Um, they yield some very impressive results. So um, if you are interested in learning more, I'm going to put a link in the show notes below. And um, anyway, once again, this has been the Art of Photography. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.